Hey boys, Scotty the Redneck Canadian. Thanks to my uh, new channel where hopefully I don't swear and offend people. But uh, hey, today we're gonna check out my new firewood processor. I had it for, a, I don't know, about a month and a half or so now. This is a Range Road Eco Pro 300. And uh, as you can see, we got all the bugs worked out of it. And uh, the one thing that's important that I found, once you have access to this kind of wood, about six to 10 inches, and nice clean stuff, you're probably not gonna wanna get a firewood processor. Well, you got access to big elm trees and big ash and stuff like that. It's probably not the machine for you. But uh, anyway, we got the optional hydraulic infeed on here. And uh, we have the non-optional, but works really awesome uh, firewood deck here. I gotta tell you, that flatbed works amazing for uh, catching the firewood, which you'll see. And then I've got the six-way splitter on here. This has a 27 ton, uh, it's advertised anyways, but I believe it probably is close to that splitter. So when you're putting big pieces in, I found this six-way splitter is a really good four-way splitter in one pass on stuff this size. Because if you start going any bigger than that, you're really only getting about four and a half tons per force on each one of those six spins. In, uh, it's just not enough if you have any kind of a knot in there. So let me show you how it works. We're gonna shoe safety. I got my safety uh, flip flops on. And uh, I'm gonna reach over here and start it. <laughs> We got a storm coming in so i need to wrap this video up so i'm gonna take over the camera duties so we got it here we just feed her on here everything goes through and yeah we got a big old thing of wood so um let me show you a couple of things that i don't like about it this thing is supposed to mount on this side okay but what happens is when you're operating the machine you always got to reach in there because stuff's messed up and so my fix was to move it to the other side but the problem is then it interferes with this cage opening so i think i'm just gonna have to cut that off weld another plate on it so that it's there because what was happening was everything was always in my way and i was smacking my head on it and it wasn't fun and then to make matters worse you can see what's going on here when you put the six way in everything tries to ride up and then it catches on these two bolts so those are going to need to get replaced with carriage bolts i think that will fix that problem um let's see oh yeah these things your log dogs there needs to be like an adjustable one or something here because what happens when you dog your last piece and you bring the saw down it wants to shift it all over the place it needs one further back um to help out with that and it would be nice if that was adjustable unfortunately everything's welded together so i can't just take it off but i might just have to fix up a part like that um really the only problems i've had with it was immediately these two lines on the infeed leaked and then the first time I put pressure, real pressure on the uh, the ram, the uh, hydraulics over here came loose. I'll show you. So yeah, this 
main line right here. All three that went were these. Um, I bought it from uh, Running Gears in Harrison, Michigan. And uh, they've been really cool. They've been really great. I got the feeling I might have actually been their first customer that they sold one of these two, quite honestly. Um, the one big complaint I have is this oiling system. This just sucks. There needs to be a shut off. I get it. Um, you know, because it's not going to be like your regular chainsaw where it's going to not drip when it's not running. But instead of this being the way to adjust it, it needs a dial or something. Um, because what happens is nobody's ever going to be running one of these by themselves. And the other person's, one person's going to do that. And then they're going to turn it on and off with that one. And it always gets, once I get it set, somebody else comes along and messes up with the setting. Um, and apparently there's another issue right here because that hose, which was a factory installed hose, is getting worn right there. So, um, that is definitely an issue. We're gonna have to find a way to replumb that. Oh, the other problem with this thing, these are all like British hoses, British number twos or something like that. So you're not gonna be able to go to your, you know, local guy who you normally go to to get your hydraulics, hydraulic lines and stuff uh, made. Yeah, he's not gonna be able to do it. But anyway, um, overall, I'm happy with it. I got uh, everything 8,600 bucks tied up into it. And uh, so for the price, hey, it's a pretty good processor. We got a pretty damn good stack of wood there. We're pushing uh, pushing 15 face cords, and then I got a bunch over there. So anyways, that's uh, my honest review of it. And uh, if you do have one of these or you're interested in buying it, I did set up a Facebook users page called EcoPro 300 Owners because eventually these things are going to break, and uh, it'll be nice to have an owner's group so that we can uh, get together and figure out how to fix stuff. Anyways, have a good one. I got to get inside. It's going to start raining.